All right, so this video is gonna be on my i3 config. Um, I've been meaning to put up this video for a while, but uh, I've been distro hopping. Um, I'm, I'm actually on Parabola now, uh, which is just the Libra equivalent of Arch. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a long story. I might put up a video later complaining about different distros, but um, yeah, so this, this video is just on i3, my i3 config. Um, so yeah, I use i3 as my Windows manager. Uh, a lot of people who use it will sometimes use, you know, some other desktop manager as their background, uh, like a backup or something. But I'm at the point where I pretty much use i3 all the time, nothing else. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything else installed. And this is actually a fresh install. I just installed the system like two days ago. Um, so yeah, it just has the basic stuff in my config files. But uh, yeah, let me go ahead and get into it. So I use i3 gaps, as you can tell. Um, and I actually found this out really recently. I totally did not know this, but you can actually change gap size in real time. I, I don't know what, I feel stupid for not knowing this, but uh, so for example, I mapped to, let me actually show you the shortcut. Um, so I have mapped to mod plus S is increase the cur the gaps, the inside gaps by five, five pixels. So I can press that and get some more gaps. Or if I wanna get rid of them, I hold down shift and that decreases the current gaps. Uh, similar, I have, similarly, I have Z, that's increase the outer gaps by five. So I can, you know, do that, hold down shift, move them back out. Uh, or if I want to put them back to my default, I have it set to like plus, um, what is it, mod shift T. Um, and that gets, gets them back to 15 by 15, that's usually what I use. Or let's say I, um, you know, let's say I need some extra space and I just need to maximize everything, I can just mod shift D and that gets rid of the gaps altogether. So I didn't know you could do that, you know, so easily until recently, but yeah, that's my newest addition. Um, but anyway, let's let's go ahead and talk about, let's start at the beginning, I guess. Um, so I define everything up front, got my termite, that's my terminal, my browser is Ice Weasel. it's really just Firefox, it's just like the Parabola rebranding. Same thing with Ice Dove, it's really just Thunderbird. Um, let's see, uh, so my, uh, up here, I finally found uh, a, status bar that I actually like, and this is Bumblebee status. Um, it's sort of, I, it took a while for me to find this thing, but it's actually pretty, it's pretty sweet. I definitely recommend it for different reasons. Uh, one of the reasons I like it is just cause like it's easy to customize the colors. So like in i3 blocks, you can't necessarily do that easily, but here it's actually pretty nice. And the code it's written in, um, it's written in a very, it, just written very transparently. Like even if you don't know Python very well, I'm sure you could pretty much just get in there and start changing things. Um, but yeah, a I mean, a lot of other programs aren't necessarily that transparent, but yeah. So this is my custom theme. Um, I'll, you should check out the link. I'll put it in the, the, um, the video, but this is my own theme. I'm not necessarily going to put it up cause it's sort of like in progress, but, um, yeah. Uh, so I have some basic mappings, you know, mod. Uh, mod enter, of course, is make a new window. Mod shift enter, new tmux and window, just in case I need one. Um, restart i3, mod shift escape, you know, stuff like that. Reboot, mod shift bas back skip, pff, backspace, nice to have. Um, now, when it comes to letter keys, I, I have basically everything mapped to something. Um, I like not having to, like, use D menu or anything to like put in what program I want. I just want to be able to press one key and get what I want. So for example, mod W is Q browser, um, which is, you know, always nice to have. Uh, oops, I accidentally pressed Q. <laughs> um, so mod W is Q browser, mod shift W is um, Firefox, uh, mod E is MUT for email, uh, mod shift E is my um, Thunderbird, et cetera, et cetera. So I pretty much have everything I need on a daily basis just to one key press. Um, so one thing that uh, is really nice, I, I haven't found a lot of people who do this, but it works really well for, for me. Um, I don't like the default in i3 where you have like a resize mode. You press like, I think mod Z and then you move your Vim keys to resize windows. And that's way too much work because you have to go into the mode, change them, then go out. So what I have here is if you hold down mod and shift and then you just move your you like fingers up one row so that they're on Y, U, I, and O, uh, you can resize windows super easy. So that's how I have everything mapped here. It just, I don't know, it's way easier to be able to map every, or to resize everything on the fly. Uh, so that's that's something that's really nice to have. Um, let's see what else. Um, uh, yeah, so I also have a, a lock screen. There are a lot of people who use this one lock screen. I forget who put it up. Some guy on like a Reddit thread or something. Um, but I use this, 
Um, it's actually pretty smart uh, of a script. It takes a it uses Scroat to take a screenshot, and then originally it resizes it. It like shrinks it down and shrinks it back up so it's all blurry, and then it puts a little lock picture in the middle, and then it uses that as your i3 lock. So it locks your screen like that. Um, I just made some changes myself. Instead of like minimizing it, I have it use the image magic paint command. And that that's so it like sort of, I don't know, if you ask me, it looks a little prettier. Let me actually bring it up. Um, it really just, uh, it sort of distorts the colors. They, they're still vibrant. They're still good looking, if you ask me. Um, but it sort of does that. Uh, and that's what the lock screen looks like. So yeah, I'll put that up too. I'll put all these little uh, config files up. Um, so that's that. Uh, and the other thing I also have is uh, a whole bunch of commands for like music. Um, so here's my music player, which is uh, Mulk P. So let's say I'm on another screen, or let's say you can even like get rid of this and it's still playing. Uh, let's say I'm on another screen doing some quote unquote work. Um, well, mod in is next song. Mod B is back a song. Uh, mod P pauses, uh, or mod O restarts the song. Just stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh yeah, I also, I think I have bracket. Yeah, so like mod brackets, that moves the song forward or backwards. And I have volume mo um, uh, map to like mod plus and minus. Um, I have volume keys, but like they're too far away. Like I'd have to like raise my middle finger too, hard, uh, too high. So I just have them um, set to mod plus and minus. Um, so just cause I'm a little lazy. So yeah, everything is basically, you know, everything's set to like some kind of keyboard shortcut. Got my visualizer, you know, let's say I'm listening to music and, oh, it's not pretty enough. Let's use my visualizer. I actually have two, uh, one to mod V, one to mod shift V. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's not important. Um, or maybe it is. Okay, so other mappings. I actually have F1 mapped to basically nothing and that's because sometimes I'll be in a program and I'll like go for F2 or like tilde and then I'll press F1 and some stupid like help menu will come up. Uh, I mean, it would happen in Vim if I press F1 now, but I have this set to basically echo help to dev null, which does effectively nothing. Uh, so this overrides any program specific command. So like it basically dis disables F1 in all my programs because I've never once in my life ever wanted to press F1, but I've pressed it accidentally all the time. Um, F11's full screen. I also have some useful utilities mapped to like mod plus F uh, buttons. So A render is for um, like uh, if I plug my thing into a screen, uh, it gives you options for that. Have hibernate. Also have uh, restart my network manager. And that's for if I like go in a place where, that I know there's like Wi Fi and I want it to like recheck for Wi Fi, um, you know, things I can log on to, I just press that and it'll, you know, uh, rescan or whatever. Um, I also have like, so Arch, of course, you know, any minimalist distro doesn't come with any automatic way of mounting drives. So I actually have my own, um, uh, I actually have my own script that I just wrote one day for mounting, um, which there's probably something that does this better, but like I was at my house and I had no internet, so I just did it myself. It's super brief. Um, and how this works is like when I activate the script, it just searches dev SD whatever for like, um, you know, for like any dr familiar drive. So it checks all of them for like familiar UUIDs. So this is the UUID of my D Western Digital two terabyte external drive. And if it detects that, it get, makes a directory for it and it mounts it there. So all these drives automatically mount to the place I specifically want. Um, so this is how I mount stuff. Um, of course, the drives have to be familiar. And, and whenever I get a new USB device, I'll just put it in here and that'll be that. Um, and I also have an unmount script that just unmounts them and then deletes the folders. Uh, let's see what else. Oh yeah, I have, I recently started like labeling all my workspaces. Um, so, you know, uh, one in 10 are for like sort of just the uh, whatever generic stuff. Got the little Linux penguin and the smiley face. Um, two is for Mozilla, uh, three and four for terminals or programming. Five is for GIMP, six is for Blender. Uh, seven is for stuff I background. Um, and then eight is for like, I, I usually put my torrent client here and I usually put my email in nine. Uh, so that's what that's for. I might get rid of those. I, I might just have just numbers, uh, but you know, whatever, it actually works all right. Uh, but sort of as a corollary of that, I have, uh, well, let's look at GIMP. So I have, uh, if I start GIMP, uh, it automatically moves to the fifth screen and puts it there. 
Um, and also I have these settings for the GIMP dock and toolbox. So if I turn on the GIMP, the, the toolboxes or whatever, they automatically appear here. Now, if you're just starting to use i3, you will probably know that GIMP starts like this, and then like the toolbars start in the middle and you have to move them to the side, and that's a huge pain. Uh, so with these commands, it basically just moves them over nice and uh, easy. And of course, if you're using my script, if you're using my config or whatever, uh, you do have to sort of um, uh, chain finagle with it because my screen is probably a lot smaller than yours. My, my screen is like 1280 by 800 or something like that. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, I think pretty much the last thing here is um, my screencast command. So like I don't actually use a terminal for screencasting. I just uh, use a shortcut. So at the very beginning, I map to this variable screencast. I map this big ffmpeg command. And that's what I'm running right now. So I just press mod and then um, print screen. And that'll start recording. And when I'm done, I press mod shift print screen. And that'll kill ffmpeg, thus ending the recording. A uh, similar thing with uh, audio. If I want to just record audio, I use uh, scroll lock, mod scroll lock. Um, let's see what else. Anything? Oh, yeah, and I also have a calculator program. I have found this recently. It's actually pretty nice. Uh, I think I have it mapped to mod A as well. Yeah. So uh, calc with the Q, you can just go. It's a really nice math program. Oh, what is 454 uh, plus 5 raised to the ninth? Um, so it's pretty efficient. Um, uh, and you can actually do a whole lot of stuff in that. It's not just like simple arithmetic. Um, well, anyway, uh, let's see. Is there anything else we're going to talk about? Talk about the i3 bar, talk about the basics. So I think that's it uh, pretty much for my i3 config. I'm going to put it up in the video description along with the scripts that I use. Uh, and I might put up a video on my system in general or my workflow later. But uh, yeah, and this thing is always changing. So I could totally change how everything works. But uh, um, and I'll talk about it if that happens. But anyway, well, thanks for watching. Hope you uh, learned something or got some ideas. See you around.